Clay is one of the oldest art mediums known, in part because it's always been abundant and it's cheap. The same is true for fibers or reeds that were used to make baskets. They were readily available and found almost anywhere. Did you know that the earliest use of clay was when it was used to line baskets as a way to waterproof them? The clay lining made the basket waterproof, and when that lining eventually dried out and separated from the inside of the basket, it retained its shape. Eventually, early people discovered that when these clay linings were left in the fire, they hardened and made sturdy containers on their own. This is when the art of ceramics was born. Why not combine fired clay and basket making to make a modern vessel form? The base for the vessel will be made to accommodate the addition of reeds and a fusion of pot and basket as possible. We'll start by making the clay base for a vessel. This base can be hand built or thrown on the wheel. It could be coiled built, made in a slump mold, or even start out as a pinch pot. It can be bowl shaped or more upright like a cylinder. It can even be made into a square using slabs. The only important thing is that the rim is sturdy enough that holes can be punched through it. This base was thrown on the potter's wheel using about a pound and a half or so of clay. This is left slightly heavy in the base just to add some weight so that it'll support the reed that we'll be adding later. So with a hole punch, I'm going to start adding holes all the way around the pot. I'm going to go down about an inch. This is a half inch Kemper hole punch. You could use a smaller hole punch. The only thing you want to make sure is that the hole is a larger diameter than the reed that we're going to be putting through it. So I'm going to go down about an inch and just start kind of eyeballing my spacing. I'm going to go about an inch apart on these. Um, and you know, you can measure if you'd like to, but the, the only important thing is that you end up with an odd number of holes so that when we weave, um, that works out. Baskets always have an odd number of spines. So once you've gone all the way around and you let your base dry completely, it should be bisque fired. So after the bisque fire, you could use a traditional glaze if you'd like, um, but this vessel is not going to come into contact with food, so you could just choose to stain or paint it after the bisque firing. So now I'm going to begin on the top part of the vessel that will be woven. I've got round reed soaking here, and this needs to soak at least 30 minutes. Overnight it would be great. Um, and I've cut these round reeds twice the length of the height, so if I want a 10 inch tall vessel, I'm going to cut my reed to be 20 inches. So I'm just going to go in through that hole about halfway, fold it. Now it's flexible. It's bending very easily because it has been soaked. And it's kind of handy to use a clothespin or a clip, a binder clip or something to hold that together. And we're just going to tie those round reeds in place. I'm using a piece of waxed linen. Um, I like this waxed linen because it just really grabs. You could use yarn here or hemp. I'm um, just going to tie that tightly. And so you're just going to repeat this for every hole in your base. So you're going to end up with a base looking like that. I've just kind of loosely tied these all together to keep them standing upright. And then you can really use anything to, to weave, anything that's flexible. So yarn, lanyard material, hemp, even soft wire could be used. You can leave these reeds untrimmed or trim them to an even level when you're finished. And I've got, actually I'm just going to use hemp. I tie my first piece on and this is not kind of a traditional, real basket makers don't tie but I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to start and all you really need to do, I'm just going to remove this while I'm weaving. Just like you're weaving any basket, we're going to go over and under or in front of and behind as you go around the basket. Now you can weave a piece pretty densely, like this one is, is woven pretty tightly. Or you could do sections and leave the vessel more airy. The addition of beads on the top is one way to add some adornment. 
So this vessel is a sculptural celebration of two ancient crafts woven into one. If you'd like more detailed information or a materials list, please visit dickblick.com forward slash lesson plans.